If you remember from my projects for the Affinity Solar Jar, this was version 3. It was never actually sold. It was more of a research type of deal. And I kind of let it sit at that for a while. I really didn't do anything with it, but I had to revisit it and expand upon it even more now that I have more electronics knowledge. And the other thing is too, the boost converter that I was using on this to power the LED, the NCP1402. It went extinct, basically. It went away to Dodo. I couldn't even find stock for it anymore, and they stopped making it. So, for me to revisit it, I also had to redesign the circuit and make it a lot better. So, after a few months of working with it, I now have not the Infinity Solar Jar version 3. I now renamed it. It is the Infinity Solar Bank version 4, because it is a major upgrade. Instead of holding two supercapacitors like version 3, this now holds up to six capacitors supercapacitors. You can run it on one, but you can run it up to six. I've also put a display on here for voltage, which I'll get into a little bit more. And we are now using for a boost converter on this. It's a Texas Instruments TPS 61021A, if I got it right. Did I put it on here? Yes, yeah, 61021A. This one is able to put out up to one and a half amps when the supercapacitors are fully charged but it's still really meant for low power applications, basically around 20 milliamps. This only ran maybe, I think I had it set for around 11 milliamps when fully charged, and the LED would slowly dim as they discharged. The boost converter just wasn't that good. This unit, as you can see right here on a completed version, that has lit, actually two versions right here, there you go. And these will stay fully 20 milliamps on the LED all the way down to 0.4 volts when they shut off. Like right now, the supercapacitors only have 1.05, come on, there we go, 1.05 volts. My finger wasn't hitting the switch perfectly. So let's get down to the bench and I'll show you the different features I have on this board. Now on a completed circuit board, you have two options for input power. You can use solar in either option, but you have a micro USB port and you also have a regular through hole that you can make a permanent connection to. Passes through two Zener diodes to protect the charging IC, which is a still a ZSPM 4523, uh, although ZSPM is no longer ZSPM. They are bought out by IDT in America. So that protects it from over voltage. This runs beautifully at about six volts being pumped into it. The associates, um, hardware with it such as the current sense resistor, its inductor, filtering capacitors, and the ability to reprogram it if you have uh, an I2C to USB adapter with its associated pull-up resistor. In the center we have our voltages and the charge percentage so this way you have a nice little graph that you can go by. Then you have the actual display to tell you how much the charges on the supercapacitors. Now, of course, this is not precision, but it gives you a good idea. And it's activated by the momentary button right here. Then we get down to the boost section. And you have a few things here. One, you have the TPS61021A. That's your boost chip and the associated inductor, the output capacitors. And you can adjust this from 1.8 volts to 4 volts. And this is your little adjustment right here. When I sell these, I'm going to have them preset at 3.3 volts. And I also have two solder jumpers here. They're going to be defaulted. This one controls when the boost converter turns on. You either have darkness on, which basically means when there's no power coming in through the top of here, it will activate this. So like when it gets dark at night with a solar panel, the boost converter will activate and send output power through these two connections right here. You also have a second solder jumper down here. There is a half ohm or half watt 10 ohm resistor sitting right here. This is if you want to run an LED and that's it. Sort of like when you saw on my other displays right here. They are running a direct LED on top of here through this 10 ohm resistor. So this way you can adjust the voltage and waste as little amount of power as possible. It's only 10 ohms. So you can dial in your voltage and get the most efficiency you can. Or you can put the solder jumper the other way and it's zero ohm, basically just a direct connection if you were going to use this to power a microcontroller. 
Now, like I said, this can handle up to six supercapacitors, and each spot can accommodate three different styles of supercapacitors. One, you can do the screw style right here. Uh, you also have the four pin variants, such as these right here. And you have positive, the two non-connected uh, mechanical connections, and the negative right here. And kind of hard to find these now, but the two thin positions, you can also put those right here. Here's your positive, and here's your negative. If you flip it over, <coughs> You'll see I marked them all in silkscreen. Positive, 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 negative, negative, negative. And I just put a little bar there for general negative. And you can see I've already connected the three wires. Your negative, your positive, and your sense, your um, voltage sense wire. Directly to this um, voltage display. Now, inside these voltage displays, there is a little adjustment right here. I have not calibrated these units. If you want to get a little more close to what is correct, I suggest after you put on your supercapacitors that you charge them up to about one and a half volts, disconnect whatever power you're charging from, and press the button and calibrate it yourself. This way you get a really reasonable reading off of this display. So let's go to a working unit and show it to you. Let me focus just a little bit more here. There we go. So this is a currently working unit. You can see the LED is on. And if you just press the momentary button right now, as long as the boost converter is set for a minimum of 3.3 volts, this will work correctly. Now also, if you plug it into uh, USB or you have a good solar source, you don't have to worry about it because you usually always have at least a minimum of 3.3 volts. You will get a correct reading on here. Now, if you have your boost converter turned down to like two, two and a half volts or even 3.1, it will power up, but you're not going to get a correct reading. These displays require a minimum of 3.3 volts. So keep that in mind if you use an LED that has a lower forward voltage drop or a microcontroller that you're running at two and a half volts or 1.8. Now, when it comes to powering this display these units, will not work correctly again, you when can you're either use a solar mode. panel. Now, I would recommend, honestly, the best ones I found is about three and a half watts. I think they're like five or seven dollars online. They're just little ones that look like this. Solar panel 145 by 145-3. It's basically a three and a half watt, six volt rated panel. You can get them either with a pre-connected USB female connector or I think for like a dollar less, you can get them just bare and you can direct wire in. So when you go to install the supercapacitors, the screw one is basically self-explanatory. That's really easy. Now, if you get the 2-pin or 4-pin snap-in versions, they usually have a little bit of a bend to them. That's hence the snap-in part. Basically, just line them up, and I push these in a few times, so they're definitely worn in. And it lines up perfectly with it. Then you solder two or four connections, whichever one version of the supercapacitor you got. Just make sure you keep in mind the negative and the mechanical connections on these boards. They do not have thermal reliefs. I wanted to keep the resistance, the... Uh, on the board itself as low as possible. So you need a really good soldering iron, a good at least a 60 watt, a Hakko 88D or equivalent to really soak a lot of heat into that connection and get a good solder joint. You do not want a cold solder joint that kind of defeats the purpose of low resistance. So keep that in mind when you do that. We're going to plug into a wall outlet using a little black USB cable here. Now when you plug in the USB with this unit, do not plug it into your computer. This is not regulated. It will pull upwards of two amps as these supercapacitors charge. You will blow any port you have on a computer, a laptop, whatever. Always use a dedicated wall outlet rated for two amps. If you use a half amp or one amp, at certain points, the voltage is going to sag on this too much and it's going to have problems charging. So when you use a wall outlet, make sure it's two amp rated. So let's plug into that right here. There we go. And if I press the momentary button, there you go. What's it reading? 2.07 volts and still charging, 2, 210. So it charges really quick at this rate, especially since I only have a super single supercapacitor in here. If I unplug this and get a good connection here, there, immediately you see the LED came right on. And again, you can test. 2.3 volts. I have not calibrated this one yet, so it's gonna be a little weird. Now that's how you USB charge from a house if you want to do that. It's really made for solar. 
Now, when it comes to a solar panel, the best ones I've found for this match, especially if you have full six supercapacitors populated on it, is a three and a half watt panel. Looks just like this. And on the back of it is just solar panel. D145 times 145-3. This is basically just a generic three and a half watt, six volt rated super, uh, super capacitor solar panel. You can either get it with a small USB connector if you want to keep it portable type of deal, or if you want to go for a more permanent option and save a dollar, you can get the exact same thing just without all that on there. And you just have your two little connections you would solder wires to and put a piece of glue or something onto it to make sure you don't rip them off. And then you would hardwire onto your top connections up here if you're doing a more permanent installation. So these are the best match, these three and a half watt six volts. So this way you will not waste power in the zener diodes up top here, trying to protect it from over voltage. You won't waste any power in there and you'll get about the best charge. Now, for these two, this is the four hole version, the four hole snap in version, and this is the version that I use that has the screw styles. Both of these, well, these supercapacitors kind of suck, so they charge pretty fast, but they also lose it pretty fast. In full sun, from a dead battery, this will charge those units with the three and a half plus solar panel in about two to four hours. So that's your average charge rate. Now, if you're going to charge through a two amp USB, from dead, you can usually get it in about, I think it's about 40 minutes or so, and it'll get you up to 90% charge. Now on a 20 milliamp load, if this unit is fully charged, I've had them running, honestly, about 13 hours or so, whereas version three, with only two supercapacitors and only running half the power, I could probably get 15 hours out of it, but you're getting half the light. Now, of course, the best supercapacitors I've tested for this unit is the Eton XV series, and these are rated at 400 farads and 0.41 watt hours. Six of these, and it will definitely last a lot longer than these cheap Chinese supercapacitors. These will work, but you're not going to get the capacity you really want. You're going to have to spend some money if you really want it good. Now, these units will be sold on Tindy, just as you see it right now. A fully assembled circuit board, but I will not be including any solar panels or supercapacitors. I, unfortunately, I only had the money to put in capital to build these units, and specifically 25 of them right now. Uh, once I take the capital from the sale of these, I'll put it into another 25, then maybe 100. But I don't have the amount of money available to buy a couple thousand dollars worth of quality supercapacitors from Mouser. That's where I got these from, if you're looking for them. Got them off of Mouser. These are off of Valley Express, and sometimes you'll get a good batch, sometimes you get a bad batch. But I'm selling the unit itself, and it will be shipped in an anti-static bag, be all protected. All you have to do is add your own solar panel, your own supercapacitors, and figure out what output you want to set it at in your business. Now, one thing that should go without saying, just to make sure, do not flex the board. You will pop off components. They're soldered on pretty good, but we really don't want to hear reports of crap. Stuff is popping off because you took your nice little gap and you start flexing them in. So yeah, at that point, you're gonna break connections. So be careful once you assemble this. I would suggest putting it in, especially if you're gonna use this as an outdoor unit, especially for remote monitoring. Make sure you put it in a weatherproof container with correct wires coming in and out through grommets. This is not weatherproof. One thing to note also, the boost chip on here, TI rates it for a minimum turn on voltage of 900 millivolts, 9 tenths of a volt. And at, once it turns on, it will run down on light loads, like the 20 milliamps for an LED, down to a half a volt, 500 millivolts. In practice, in this way I have it set up, it will actually activate at 700 millivolts, 200 millivolts lower than what they spec it originally to be. It happens every time. And it will run down to 400 millivolts, four tenths of a volt, and it will keep this bright at 20 milliamps on a light load and then finally just shut off. It never dims, it never gets brighter, it never gets darker, it holds it great on a light load. I have tested it briefly on a one amp load just to see if it could do it. It can do it. Uh, you will probably drain the supercapacitors really quick because honestly, 
even though it has six supercapacitors, and you thought this had a lot of capacity into it with two, six supercapacitors, actually six of these supercapacitors, actually has the same amount of joules, the actual measurement of electrons, as a AA battery, a single alkaline, non-rechargeable AA battery. That's the amount of capacity you would have with six of them. So we're still working with a small amount of power, but it charges fast, and it can also release it very quick if you need it. Case in point, if you have an application where you need to do remote monitoring and you need it to transmit only like once every couple minutes or so, then it goes into sleep, but you need that quick burst of a half an amp or so so you can transmit via Wi-Fi or whatever you're going to use, um, like a ESP2866 or the new ESP32. Perfect example. Have it in sleep mode most of the time, have it wake up, do its measurements, and then quick connect, transmit, and then go back to sleep. That's why I wanted to have something on here, because I didn't want to just do LEDs, or at least have the option of LEDs. I want people to be able to also use it for remote monitoring and running microcontrollers, and having that peak current that can handle a quick transmit and then go to sleep, and at the same time, during the daytime, they're just trickle charging from the sun. So in the description below, I'll have links to the Tindy page that I'm selling these on, just the board itself again, and also to the hackaday.io project page for this unit. And that will have the documentation for my board itself, for the uh, charging chip, and the software for reprogramming the parameters if you make your own cable or buy your own cable that would work for this. It will also have the documentation for the TI Boost chip as well. So that pretty much covers it all for you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to go ahead and leave comments down below. I'll try to get back to you. But there you go. I love it.